Good evening, everybody. I'm Scott Merrick with Ramsey County Public Works. I'm a senior transportation planner. I want to thank everybody for coming online tonight to uh, listen to our Lake Johanna Boulevard Roadway and Trail Design Study uh, PowerPoint presentation. This is an open house um, format. Um, we'll have Greg um, Brown from Kimley Horn will be presenting uh, in just a minute going over some content uh, about this study. Um, but before he um, does that, I would like to just provide you a little background. Uh, some agency partners that are working on this project with Ramsey County include uh, David Swearingen from the City of Arden Hills, the Public Works Director, uh, and also some other staff from Ramsey County, including Scott Yonke from Ramsey County Parks, County Bernardi from Ramsey County Active Living, Rich Strawman, and Jean uh, Jerrington also from Ramsey County Active Living. Um, the uh, Lake Johanna Boulevard Roadway and Trail Study uh, really um, originated from um, a series of um, complaints and comments over a period of a number of years uh, from residents in the city of Arden Hills and, and the surrounding area um, that have raised concerns about the safety of biking and walking along Lake Johanna Boulevard. Um, Lake Johanna Boulevard um, really divides Tony Schmidt Regional Park from Lake Johanna and the uh, project corridor that we're looking at specifically extends from County Road D which is on the southwest corner of the lake and then extending um, north along the lake uh, between the park and the lake and then um, the end of the study terminates at County Road E and Old Snelling Avenue just northeast of Lake Johanna. Um, the reason for the study is really just to explore the possibility of a future trail along Lake Johanna Boulevard uh, to see if that is feasible or not. Um, there's a very tight right away through this corridor. Um, homes are very close to the existing um, roadway shoulder in, in some cases, uh, as is the, as is the uh, well, lake itself. And uh, there's many trees and park amenities and um, lots of constraints in the corridor. So we want to take a look to see, um, is it feasible to build a trail um, and still have um, a usable roadway through through this corridor. Uh, we do not have funding lined up for this project at this point, um, and there is no schedule for construction. So this is at the very early um, exploratory stages of the project. Again, just to see if there's a concept or concepts that would be feasible. Um, and so we've hired Kimley Horn and Associates a planning and engineering firm to kind of walk us through a study process that will be uh, starting in October now and continuing through the spring and early summer of 2022 when we will have uh, some recommendations for um, the county board to consider. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Greg to go over some more details of the project. OK. Thank you, Scott. Um, so tonight our intent is to follow up on uh, the meeting we had in, uh, at the park last week. It's really to get input from yourselves uh, and help us to kind of start the process of, of looking at options that could fit uh, along Lake Johanna Boulevard and what some of the constraints are, what some of the concerns are and how, how a design or, or maybe a couple different designs might achieve the goal of a trail and, and weave within those various constraints that we that we know are out there and that we want to learn from yourselves. So uh, we'll start with a little instruction on how to get feedback to us tonight as a part of the presentation. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. And then I'll just dig in a little bit further uh, to the details that Scott alluded to as far as the corridor limits and some of the things that we've noticed and observed as designers uh, to date. But as I said, we really want to kind of get input from people to make sure that we're not missing anything. And this won't be the only opportunity. We will be 
conducting other meetings and, and probably reaching out to uh, various groups along the way uh, with questions. But this is a good start for us to kind of get a sense for what's on people's minds and and understand issues that might be there that wouldn't necessarily meet uh, meet our eyes as we look through the corridor. Um, We'll talk a little bit about schedule here at the end. As Scott alluded to, we're, it's roughly a nine month project schedule. Uh, so as far as the question and answer process, there's a couple means that you can utilize to ask a question here tonight. And you can start asking questions essentially now. And as we get through the presentation, we'll uh, address the questions that we received and um, you know, go from there. There will be uh, a taped version of this presentation that will go on the web. Then we'll also compile the questions that we received both tonight as well as things that we received last week in the in-person event and have kind of a, a compiled set of questions and answers that will be posted to the web as well um, after after tonight's meeting. So on the web, if you click on the ask a question button, which should be in the lower right corner of your window, uh, then you should be able to you know, type in your question and that will come to our, our side of the house and we'll be able to answer that here at the, at the uh, conclusion. On mobile versions, there's a Q&A in the upper right side of your screen, or it should be, and follow the same steps um, that are noted above for that. If you're having trouble or it isn't working for whatever reason tonight, don't uh, lose faith. Um, You'll be able to contact Scott or myself or other people to county. We can follow up by email or phone or other traditional methods. So, uh, but if you are able to utilize these, we'll try to address as many questions uh, tonight as possible. Scott uh, outlined this quite well, but the limit here on a map or the project limits here is essentially County Road D and New Brighton Boulevard, the five, lug five legged intersection to the south, begins there, runs up along the lake uh, through Tony Schmidt Park and then terminates at Snelling Avenue and County Road E. As probably most people know, there are existing trails on County Road E and, and Snelling to the north. And there are uh, existing connections we want to be looking at along the way. We'll get into those here as, uh, as we talk a little bit more in detail. But those are the general limits of the study core that we're contemplating. So we put together some project goals. These aren't necessarily the, the entire list, but these are things that, that come to mind as planners and, and engineers and what we've heard a little bit from the community. Scott alluded to you know, a lot of comments that have been received over the years. So things that we en envision the project wanting to achieve are linking the existing trail infrastructure. Arden Hills has a pretty healthy trail network. Tony Schmidt Park is a big part of that and connecting that to the broader neighborhood is a is a key benefit. We think of a trail along Lake Johanna Boulevard. We want to create a safe and inviting trail environment. People clearly walk on the corridor today on the road, either on the shoulder. There are bits and pieces of trail either uh, right behind the curb or shortly um, beyond the curb. But a lot of that system is not a comfortable system, it doesn't feel safe, especially for younger individuals or people that aren't uh, as comfortable walking or biking as as others. So that's a key part of what we're looking into is something that feels safe and feels comfortable. Uh, maintenance is always a consideration for anything we build in the public arena. So we'll be always, always have maintenance in our mind as we uh, develop concepts. In general, we would anticipate probably the uh, uh, entity of the city or county maintaining this from say snow removal or those kinds of things. It wouldn't it wouldn't be a an element that uh, budding residents would maintain, but it does need to be something that can be kept up and clean and free of snow, et cetera. So it's usable. Uh, clearly, we want to improve the mobility of people to get around the, the neighborhood and a trail like this is also likely going to be used by people coming from miles away. So uh, we really think it's got potential for a, a broad base of, of users. We're always sensitive to abutting properties and projects like this and there's no exception. So we'll be uh, careful to understand what what uh, elements exist on the, on the corridor and private properties or even in the public uh, realm, the right of way, but in people's yards. And we try to uh, limit 
uh, or eliminate any any impacts to those types of things as we develop designs. And that's a big part of what we we want to hear from people tonight. If you have concerns about things that might be either in your property or your neighbor's property, things that we just want to be aware of, feel free to highlight that. Um, and economics is always a factor in anything we do as well in the public arena. So uh, we'll be conscious of that as we develop develop ideas. Now with this list, I, I invite people to comment and, and provide other goals. And, and I think our goal statement, if you will, wants to be a collection of not just what we're seeing from the uh, planning side of the house, but maybe what the community might see that isn't in this list. So feel free to to suggest other other goals. When we had the open house at the park last week, we allowed basically people to write on boards and comment on anything they, they like. So the more the merrier as far as that's concerned. So now we'll just kind of take a, a little bit of a tour, if you will, through the corridor and we'll zoom in on, on various areas. But this exhibit shows kind of a little broader view of how the corridor fits into the bigger trail network in Arden Hills. So the Elmer Anderson Trail, you know, comes along here on the diagonal under the power line, but there is a gap along County Road E. So that's that's an element that we want to look at and see if we can make connectivity to that trail. Then as everyone knows, or maybe most people know, through Tony Schmidt Park, Elmer Anderson Trail continues north and uh, there's a crossing of Lake Johanna Boulevard. Um, we'll be looking at that and anticipate, you know, envisioning if, if improvements or safety enhancements to that crossing uh, could be incorporated into a concept. And, you know, should there be other crossings, for example, at E or maybe other places along the corridor, these arrows that we're showing along this exhibit all represent places where either streets come in or other trails or various access points and it's not intended to have all of them identified, but those are things we want to be looking at and and uh, identifying if there's a need to have uh, a safer crossing or crossings at various points. I mentioned earlier we'd be looking at connecting to the east end here at Snelling and, and Carner Road E. Um, so kind of uh, zooming in along uh, at a little closer view, we have a couple snapshots of the east end here and you know what we we see in this particular part of the corridor is a curvilinear road uh, some properties are fairly close to the roadway so we'll be sensitive to that we know we've got these this trail system here at the east end we want to connect to in a safe way we also know that this intersection is being studied and uh, could very well change in its character configuration so we want to uh, be cognizant of that and we'll be coordinating with that effort and and kind of uh, including or uh, showing, depicting what's coming out of that process is, as we develop concepts in, in our uh, study. Moving west through Tony Schmidt Regional Park, here's a couple images. I mentioned that crossing for the Elmer Anderson Trail as well as access back and forth across Lake Johanna Boulevard to the park. We'll be looking at at this crossing and and exploring whether uh, this could be improved or should be improved. We'd like to hear any thoughts or comments people have on that. Um, clearly, the park itself offers a lot of opportunity to uh, marry up the two worlds: the, the regional trail and getting people to and from the park, and maybe even meandering through the park a little bit, uh, if that makes sense and and is um, you know as interest or uh, um, aesthetic quality to the trail experience. Part of what we do in our, as we approach trail design is think of things from not just getting from A to B, but an experiential perspective. What uh, feels safe, I mentioned kind of that safety feeling, but we also want to think about um, aesthetics and interest and what would be an interesting experience as a biker or walker and to the extent we can kind of uh, adjust the trail path to maybe play on things that are points of interest along the way, that's a benefit. Uh, as we move a little bit to the west, we start to get to one of the tighter locations in the corridor. And this is that stretch where the the roadway is, you know, very close to the shore. The shore drops off. It's quite steep. It's quite steep um, on the other side of the roadway. So space is very limited here. 
there is a section of this that has a little bit of trail on the one side, but it's it still doesn't feel comfortable, doesn't quite feel safe. Um, the comments we heard last week uh, and things that I would I'd say, you know, are uh, pretty uh, apparent is someone that's just kind of looking at this and and I did I have uh, grew up in here. I grew up in Columbia Heights and I used to bike to Lake Johan as a kid. So uh, I've experienced this, you know, way back and probably could have used a, a trail at that time. So I do understand the need to um, have something that feels safe, especially for the the attraction here of the beach and the and the park and the number of kids that go to that. We flagged a couple other things that caught our eye here. There's there's some uh, kind of a roadway slash um, access path alley that does connect down. There's there's some signage that uh, indicates crossings there, and that's something I think we'd want to look at and make sure if there's an opportunity to do improve that or make that safer, we could explore that. Then at the south end of the project, uh, the roadway becomes straight in alignment. The character is is pretty uniform, so we have fairly wide shoulders. Um, we have boulevards that kind of range from relatively flat to some um, hills, but not quite as steep as they are along the lake. Then we have the intersection at County Road D, New Brighton Boulevard and Fairview. That's that's fairly uh, imposing for some pedestrians and, and cyclists that aren't all that comfortable just from the scale of it, the size of it. So that's something we'll want to look at to see are there things we can do to that intersection uh, geometry or width to to make the crossing a little bit more uh, safe and comfortable. Another thing we we want to be uh, looking at, and we'll probably have uh, conversations with, be the Presbyterian Homes um, campus, if you will. So a lot of people live there, of course. A lot of people work there, and um, you know how the trail may uh, help that uh, and provide an amenity for them, as well as from uh, just there's need for maybe employees or workers to use the trail to get to work as opposed to driving or those types of things. So we'll probably uh, look at having a conversation with the management of that entity to understand if there's any special uh, criteria or things that they might want to see out of a project like this. Uh, uh, Scott alluded to this, but here's a graphic on our schedule. So the, the items here on the left that are kind of a teal, Blue are the things that are in the scope of the study that we're embarking on now. So, you know, we're right in this early phase here, summer, fall of 21. We're analyzing data, collecting information, getting uh, input from the community, which is part of what tonight is all about. Then uh, we'll be transitioning into uh, development of conceptual plans over the fall and winter. We envisioned uh, coming back to the community in a similar meeting like this, or maybe an in-person meeting indoors though, probably not outdoor at the park, but sometime during the winter of 22, uh, get some feedback on some initial ideas. And then we'll take that and refine the ideas. Um, and maybe we'll gel around one particular option, or it could be a series of, of ideas that are that warrant further investigation, further study, further engineering. Um, and I think Scott alluded to this as well, but at this time there's no construction money in the budget, but part of what this study is intended to do is to, to identify if there's a feasible option to be implemented, approximately what that might cost, and that will help set the stage for further engineering and funding requests to try to uh, accomplish a project. And funding can come in a lot of different shapes and ways, and, and the county is is quite um, adept at looking into you know, any opportunities that might arise in the funding arena. So those, but those two elements, kind of that detailed design and funding for construction are, are not determined at this point. And um, you know, that's something that might we might have more information on or thoughts on as we get to the tail end of this process. So I, I alluded to in the beginning, if you're having trouble with uh, asking questions or you know, using the site to, to ask your question, you're always able to contact Scott either by phone or email, and all of this is on the website. Um, so if you and the website will have this, this presentation as well as other information along the way. I think we're also developing a list of emails that we can send out 
uh, email blast to people that's saying there's the new concept on the website or new meeting or this or that. So feel free to um, log yourself in or, or enter your email into the into the system so that we can kind of give you updates. You don't necessarily have to check the, the website uh, periodically. It it should remind you of anything that's significant that's going on. Another thing I'll, I'll point out that I didn't mention earlier is we have a, a map and survey online that's available to you. And um, that's something that's interactive. You might have done that type of uh, uh, tool or use that type of tool for other public engagement processes. But basically, you can put a comment on the, on our map of the corridor, whatever location you like, or you can comment on other people's comments. So it's quite a uh, helpful tool. We have that live until November 12th. It went live last week when we started the or had the meeting at the park. So uh, feel free to utilize that to um, identify any any issues or comments you have. And it's helpful in that you can put a location with your comment. Um, so it might be a little bit easier than trying to descri describe things that you might be trying to do um, elsewise in a, in a comment format. So with that, um, yeah, I think we'll we'll go to the question format of the of the program. Uh, I think we've got a handful of questions in here that have come in as as we've been presenting. And I think I'll just I'm going to kind of switch screens here and take a look at um, these and kind of uh, work work our way through. There's a couple I'll address and Scott will come in here for for a couple and we'll just kind of play it by ear as to how to uh, or who, who can respond. So the first one I, I'll, I'll address is a question about right away. So the question is kind of a general question of what is the right away with on Lake Johanna Boulevard and, and does what does that include? So um, and this is a common thing. It's a little mysterious, frankly, because the you know there's not a painted line in, in the in roadways and it's not the curbs typically. So on Lake Johanna Boulevard, generally the right of way width is 66 feet. The roadway width varies from about 40 some feet to 30 or so feet where it gets narrower at the, those narrower sections. So what that means is space beyond the curb or the edge of the road, typically in the 15 foot range, plus or minus, depending on where we're at in the corridor, is still in the public right of way width. So anything within that space is is part of Lake Johanna Boulevard, is part of Ramsey County land. Now, with that said, um, we you know we understand that over time, and uh, you know people's yards tend to have elements, and sometimes there's slopes or walls or those types of things that are in that in that space. That's some of the elements that we'll be looking at as we as we develop concepts and try to be as sensitive as possible to that. Our our intent is to not to necessarily you know, have expand have an expansive uh, system that takes up some of that space that's green now. What we might very well do in some of the concepts is reduce the road width and try to utilize as much of that existing space as possible without uh, encroaching or moving out outwardly. So, even though the right of way does include more space, we're sensitive about not trying to um, get out and use as much much of that as, as we can avoid. Uh, and it does vary, I would say. It's not always 15 feet, so it, it will be a kind of a case by case uh, type of situation. Uh, the uh, there's a question about which side of the road are we planning to put the trail on, which is it's a good question. I don't know. I, I think we want to look at both sides of the road and and develop you know kind of pros and cons of each one. I would say there's some you know. Part of me initially would say that I think having a trail near the water side makes a lot of sense, but that isn't necessarily the you know the the final answer. There are um, you know issues with that as you go along the corridor with slopes and things. So we would be looking at the whole kind of dynamic of of uh, pros and cons associated with any concept. We might consider changing the side of the road depending on which part of the corridor we're in. So maybe on the south end we're on the east side, but we we're over to the west or the north uh, and then back. With with that said, we don't necessarily want to cross the road any more than we have to because crossings are inherently, you know, uh, a safety concern. But uh, there might be reasons to um, 
uh, switch the side of the road based on topography or, or other issues along the way. So it hasn't been determined. We'll be looking at both sides, I think, to do our due diligence. We want to consider both and not just kind of assume one. This is an area too. We certainly welcome important thoughts from people on, you know, where would you like to have a trail if you were walking along or biking? Do you have a preference or are you kind of neutral on that? Uh, there are a, a few questions I think um, it's Scott might want to address here. I, I think I'll turn the mic over to Scott and let him address uh, three or four questions here that are coming through. Sure, thank you, Greg. Um, so there's a couple similar questions that are asking about um, the ability to use some of the existing road infrastructure um, for a future trail and or reroute some traffic off of Lake Johanna Boulevard onto other roads so we could use um, you know, some of the existing auto lanes um, for a future trail. Uh, I think uh, probably the best answer for that right now, that is really not something that um, that we've thought about or have talked to the city of Arden Hills about. Um, the uh, the primary purpose or the, the, the goal, I think the overarching goal of the project for Ramsey County is to uh, develop a design that works well for auto traffic and bike and ped traffic. And so um, in order to do that, we really need to maintain the integrity of the two-way uh, two auto traffic um, along with uh, developing a bike trail. It can't be one or the other. Uh, from the county's perspective, this is um, a county state aid highway. So what that means is that there's special funding from the state of Minnesota that comes through the state gas tax that's provided um, by MnDOT to Ramsey County um, for this roadways and uh, for this roadway and other roadways that have this county state aid highway designation. And so along with that comes uh, the expectation and the requirement that we um, maintain a certain design standard for this roadway. Uh, and Greg can speak in greater detail about what those standards are. So there are, there are, um, some flexibility, uh, flexibilities in the state aid design standards to narrow some uh, lane widths um, and do certain things to accommodate bike and ped facilities, but to completely eliminate um, a lane of traffic is really not something that the county um, is thinking of uh, at, at, at this point in time. Uh, so I think that's probably the best answer I can give to that question right now. Um, there's also another question about um, how would a project like this typically be funded? Uh, there's a variety of funding sources that uh, we could use. I just mentioned the county state aid highway funds. This is a county state aid highway or a CASA um, highway uh, it's called. And so there are gas tax dollars, as I mentioned, that are available for this roadway uh, that could potentially be used by Ramsey County. Uh, we do not have any of those any of those funds available right now for this roadway, but that is something that we could potentially look at in the future. Um, there's also the uh, county road uh, property tax levy funds that um, are available. Um, also, those are also allocated right now to other projects. Um, there's also federal funds that could be uh, pursued through the Metropolitan Council regional solicitation process. Um, those funds are very, very competitive and typically go to uh, pretty high scale or regionally significant projects. Um, um, a lot of times of, uh, of much higher scale than the, than the Lake Johanna Boulevard um, corridor, but that is potentially a funding source that the county could um, apply for in, in the future. Um, there's also state funding available through the Minnesota DNR uh, because there's Tony Schmidt Park and Lake Johanna um, adjacent to this corridor. Um, we could potentially go after some DNR funds. There's some DNR grants available 
So there is a variety of sources, um, local, state, and federal that we could look at, uh, but that um, those funds are really, um, you know, something that we haven't really looked at in great detail yet. I think the first step is to come up with uh, concept design, and then from there, uh, we will evaluate those options uh, in greater detail. Um, th there's another question here from the Rice Creek Watershed uh, District, um, and I want to thank uh, Kyle Axtell uh, for providing uh, input and uh, attending the meeting tonight. Uh, and Kyle uh, from the Watershed District is just offering um, the uh, Watershed's collaboration with uh, Ramsey County on this project to look at possible stormwater best ma management practices. And the county would definitely uh, invite that collaboration, Kyle, and we look forward to working with you uh, on those efforts. Um, and there's a number of other questions uh, coming in here that I'm kind of perusing, if you just bear with me uh, a minute. Um, there's a question here about um, as traffic seems to increase on Lake Johanna Boulevard, would any speed or traffic calming measures be considered? A lot of folks are used to driving on this road, have a phone in the face on the straight right away, uh, would love um, the road to force people to pay attention. Uh, definitely. Um, Valid observation, um, speed and inattentive driving are concerns that have been raised by many people along the corridor. And I know that there's been some uh, some pretty tragic accidents um, as a result of speed and inattentive driving. Um, and so that is definitely something that um, we are considering. Uh, again, within the parameters of what we can do um, with maintaining our county road uh, state aid design standards. Um, I'll let Greg maybe take a couple of these here. Sure. Um, uh, there was a question on providing a link to to design standards uh, and what uh, we could do that, but what we envision doing as we develop concepts is to uh, provide kind of the basis for some of those standards or, or talk about how those standards apply. It isn't, it's really not a one size fits all. It's kind of a complicated web of, of things that interrelate to each other. So it's it's probably in, our, in my mind easier to say here's Here's how the standards apply to this section. What I what I would say, and I think Scott alluded to this, is in general what will apply to the the biggest things that will apply to the the project here, the study is lane widths, and the the good news, if you want to call it that, is generally standards have been um, constricting. So you know, not long ago, a standard lane width was 12 feet. Uh, currently, it it's a corridor like this or a roadway like this. A 10 foot lane would be acceptable. Now there's a lot of things that we want to consider um, and whether that's re responsible and appropriate, but uh, generally uh, design standards have become um, more uh, compact if, if uh, from a kind of neighborhood perspective when it comes to local streets like this. Um, so that's that's going to be helpful to us in that you know the existing roadway has shoulders generally throughout they do vary in width but uh, the standards don't require expansive shoulders so that's why i alluded to earlier a potential to maybe you know utilize some of that road space to accommodate some of the extra width that we need in the, in the project for the trail so it isn't a just a completely additive exercise it's it's very likely that you know some concepts will have the road getting narrower and then that allows for, for some room for a trail without getting too far beyond where the curbs are today. Um, so uh, I think standards in general will be uh, 
probably working a little bit in our favor, frankly, on, on this. And they have they have kind of evolved over the last decade or so. Um, there was some discussion, or, uh, and we had some of this last week too, about comments about making a portion of this one way or be, because of space. And Scott alluded to the intent going into the study wasn't isn't necessarily to do that, and that, and uh, that can be problematic from an overall transportation network perspective. Um, but it's it's something I guess we will ask the city about. There are some ramifications associated with that, on uh, uh, that are pretty significant relative to roadway jurisdiction. So, on the surface, it it certainly is an idea that could save space or re reduce space, but it it's something that has a lot of uh, baggage. So we want to make sure we we explore that and understand that yeah, before we would um, kind of go go down that road. No pun intended. But yeah, we did hear that comment uh, last week, and and we see it tonight. So it's something that we'll have a discussion with the city with, and we'll be able to speak to that when we when we start developing concepts. Um, oh, I, I, there yeah, a, there's a question here about um, approvals and interaction with the city of Arden Hills, so I can attempt to address that. Um, as we mentioned at the start of the meeting, David Swearingen is the public works director, city engineer for city of Arden Hills. So David is our liaison with the city um, that serves on the technical advisory committee for this study and so um, David will be involved with the process from the start through the end of the recommendations. He was at the public open house last week at Tony Schmidt Park. Uh, I guess I'm not sure if he's on the call here tonight, but um, the uh, as it relates to approvals with the city, um, uh, at this point in the study process, there won't be any formal approvals per se. It's more of just uh, we're in the exploratory process of developing uh, concepts and ideas that um, are going to require further engineering analysis and study in the future. So I think the best way to answer that is that there will be a collaborative dialogue between the county and the city to develop these design concepts and ultimately at the end of the day, um, however many years from now in the future we um, end up potentially building this project, it will require uh, mutual approval of the city and the county, but that's going to be several years at a minimum down the road. There was a question, and this is kind of related maybe to narrowing the road, but a question about speed management, traffic calming. And I would say some of the things that we would be exploring uh, relative to the trail design and, and maybe making the roadway narrower in some cases, as I alluded to, would also have a benefit of traffic calming. So a lot of uh, some of the best techniques to calm traffic are related to um, the the kind of the physical design, physical uh, cons constraints that you see as you're driving down the road. So the wider and straighter a road is, the more uh, likely people are to speed. And I think anecdotally, that's what we're hearing from people, for especially that southern stretch that's straight. So anything that we do that might narrow the road, whether it's at crosswalks or just in general, that should have some, some benefit on traffic calming. And it's something that we'll keep in mind um, as we as we do develop concepts to uh, to consider because we heard quite a bit of concern last week about speeding and we were aware of that even coming into these the study and into the these meetings that that's been a concern uh, in the corridor especially maybe around Stowe but I think maybe overall it's it's kind of throughout so it's something that's going to be in our consciousness something that we'll be using design um, techniques to try to to mitigate and reduce. I think we may have 
address to everything on, that's on the DACA right now. Um, not sure if anything new is coming in. Unless I missed something or you seen anything, Scott, that we haven't spoken to yet. Yeah, I think we've covered everything for now that I can see. And we will be posting these questions and answers, as I said earlier, um, online along with things that we heard last week. Kind of try to organize them in categories and somewhat synopsize them so they're a little bit easier to, di to digest. And then we'll be using uh, this input as well as and, and the survey input and other input we got last week into our uh, design process that we're essentially uh, embarking on now. Um, so you know, we appreciate the input that we've got. We expect to get more as we go along through email and phone, and that's absolutely fine. Um, we'll be reaching out probably to, to some of the um, stake, stakeholders that are large entities like Presbyterian Homes or others. So uh, some of them may have specific um, needs and, and concerns associated with their campuses. So that's something that we'll we'll be doing as well as we uh, develop concepts. And I, I know we have the meeting is set till eight, but um, I think our attendees are pretty have been pretty stable. Looks like we haven't got new people, so I'm assuming most people have been able to an or ask their questions. Uh, maybe we'll give another minute or so. If we don't see anything, we might um, give people back a few minutes of their evening. Yeah, I don't see any more questions coming in at this point. Um, so I think uh, I think we're going to um, wrap things up here. I want to thank um, Kimley Horn and Associates, uh, Greg Brown and his team for uh, supporting us uh, this evening with the presentation. I want to thank everybody that joined the call and provided uh, questions and input. And I just want to reassure everybody that um, this is going to be a very open collaborative process and there'll be lots of additional opportunities to provide input. Uh, as Greg mentioned throughout the winter and the spring months, uh, please pay attention to the project website that's on the screen. Um, you can uh, provide comments uh, on the website. There'll be a recording of this presentation on the website as well. Um, or you can um, call me or send me an email uh, to the contact information listed on the screen and uh, continue to be um, thoughtful and thinking of um, how this project um, might might work and uh, it's something that the county is very excited about uh, working wor working with the community on and working with the city of Arden Hills on and we look forward to your further input at uh, future meetings. So I guess with that, I will uh, bid everybody adieu. Have a nice evening and um, we will talk to you soon. Thank you.